Cool. So uh, we're Light Matter, and uh, we're building computer chips for AI in the context of data centers and eventually autonomous vehicles. Um, to get started, just uh, show the team. So these are the people that, that make it happen. Um, you know, lots of uh, lots of people on the screen, but really we're a computer chip company, and so we have to have expertise in building ASICs, the, the processors, and also the photonic chips that we use to do the computation themselves, and then a lot of software people to wrap around that. Um, We've had some representation here from Spark, and I'd like to thank them. They're one of the investors. I've had a great time working with them so far. Um, so you, you've heard a lot about the end of Moore's Law, I'm sure. People have been talking about this for decades. And uh, I, I'm here to tell you that that's sort of not correct. That's not really the right way to think about things. Um, and you even have people sort of parroting this from uh, Stanford, and also happening to be you know, at NVIDIA at the same time, and at Google and Berkeley, um, they're talking about the end of Moore's Law. But really, the problem isn't that you can't shrink transistors. You still can. The problem is that when you shrink transistors to build your computers, they're no longer scaling in the amount of energy that they use. And this is a fundamental issue. And it affects the performance of computers now and going forward. Um, one way that you might feel this in your life is that you, you could have had a computer in 2005, if you think back to what the specs probably were, you probably had a three gigahertz processor, a uh, similar amount of RAM, and so on. And uh, today, it's, it's basically the same story. So because the energy of transistors isn't scaling, we've got a few things that computer architects have done to try to keep these chips cool as they pack more and more transistors. One of them is they've, they've lowered the clock frequency. And you can see that in the, uh, in the leftmost figure. Uh, so it's been stuck at a few gigahertz for a while. The other trick that you can play is you can say, all right, well, my chip's too hot, so I'm going to stop packing compute elements. What I'm going to do is fill it with memory. Memory doesn't use a lot of power. Uh, but the downside is you're not building a faster computer. Uh, and sort of the third option, and this is the thing that you hear from Intel and, and the other chip makers like AMD, uh, well, let's just 3D stack these things and have more density. Well, the problem is if you've got something that's really hot, stacking more things on top of it doesn't really help you get the heat out. So you've got some issues with not Moore's Law, but energy scaling in transistors. And this is happening at the same time that AI is really taking off. People have talked a lot about AI today. And uh, it's sort of interesting to look at how much compute is required, that's what's shown in this plot, to train state-of-the-art neural nets. Um, it's actually the amount of compute that's required can be quantified in a metric that's petaflop days. Think of it like kilowatt hours when you're at home. So it's actually growing exponentially. And the rate is five times faster than Moore's Law. So you're really not going to be able to keep up with this sort of demand unless you have a new technology. And unless someone comes up with it, uh, you're going to see this saturate. So we're doing uh, photonic processors. This is sort of a uh, photograph of one of our prototype chips. Uh, you can't get a lot of detail there. You need a microscope. Uh, but the main idea is this. Uh, so in about 2015, Google had a result on a new kind of processor called the Tensor Processing Unit. And in this processor, they had the insight that AI and deep learning are really underpinned by matrix multiplication. So why not just build a matrix processor? And these matrix processors are made of 2D arrays of multiply accumulate units. So you can see these in, in blue here. Um, and we can look at the specs of these things on, on an uh, electronic system. So for an 8-bit computer uh, with an area of 50 microns by 50 microns, you use about 5 milliwatts, max speed 2 gigahertz. So why did I talk about area? Well, if you've been around the optics community and electronics people providing input on it, they typically talk about how optics are big. You can't really pack them in the same way as transistors and so on. But you really need to compare apples to apples. So we can look at the photonic elements that we build at Light Matter. Uh, they're a, a, an optical version of the multiply accumulate unit that's used in electronics and in Google's TPU. Uh, so it's the same area. The power is uh, less than a thousandth, and you can go at tens of gigahertz. Actually, the theoretical bandwidth uh, for this system at our wavelength is 173 terahertz. So it's, it's quite fast. Um, so, so yeah, pretty interesting technology. Um, really taking something that's like the TPU and plugging in optics into it. And uh, you have sort of the same trappings and interfaces. Um, so what are the implications of this kind of technology? Well, because our system is faster and more efficient, we're able to put out more compute for the same amount of uh, power. And this will enable applications like autonomous driving going from the gap between L3 and L5. 
uh, because you're really not even close to getting there with current technologies. And as cars are electrified, um, it becomes increasingly important that you're able to not take too much power from those batteries because people want range in the cars. It's one of the, the main complaints. And, and the other implication is that you're going to be able to continue to power the growth of AI and new advanced algorithms and just continue to scale the technology. Um, so with that, I thank you for your time.